This video demonstration is brought to you by the Crafts Channel in association with Dremel Hobby. Hi, my name's Kate Hemmings and I'm pleased to welcome you to a special video project demonstration brought to you by the Crafts Channel in association with Dremel. Dremel offer a fantastic range of hobby products that are great for all your crafting projects and today Corinne Brad is going to be showing us how to use the Dremel VersaTip. Hi Corinne. Hello Kate. The VersaTip is what it says. It's a very versatile tipped tool. It's a heat tool. It's completely cordless because it's gas powered. It's very simple to fill up. If you okay. hold the tool so your, your tip is down and just get um, a brand of um, cig a cigarette lighter filler. Turn it upside down and you'll know when it's full because you'll see the gas coming out the top. That's full. Okay. You'll also feel the barrel going cold. It's got a range of tips that come with it. There's a soldering tip. You've also got a narrow nozzle there, for, which is great if you're heat embossing um, your rubber stamps. If you just want to do very small areas, you can do it with that. And you do it on the lowest setting of the tool, because you have here a gas control. So this is highest and this is the lowest. Okay. There's a hot knife. Um, the, you can use this for cutting uh, acetate for stencils and things like that. It's also great if you've got organza fabric, you can cut around the organza fabric and what it does is it melts the fabric as it's cutting it so it doesn't fray. Great. Um, there's a, another blade here for pyrography work. You've got a nozzle here for fanning out the flame to use it as a heat gun. You've also got a, a nozzle that goes on there and it deflects the flame so if you want to bend materials like plastic, you can place it in the bend and it will heat up that one area and then you can bend it really easily. Very clever. The tips change very easily. You get a set of spanners in there, a 7mm and an 8mm. Change the tips when the tool is cold because otherwise you'll <laughs> burn yourself. If you use the 8mm one on the barrel of the tool and the 7mm one actually on the nozzle that you're changing and just twist them apart and they screw in and out very easily. I'm going to tighten this up because I'm going to be soldering at the minute. And the way to light your tool you have a safety catch here. Pull that back with your thumb and then clip this down and this will whistle. <coughs> That's ignited. Okay. If you're doing a small bit, you don't want to keep your thumb on there the whole time because it does need to heat up to a certain degree. There's a locking catch here and then you can release this and the locking catch keeps it fired up. As soon as you want to turn it off, just switch off the locking cap. Okay, so we'll light it again. Now, while it's heating up, I don't know if you can see here, but the barrel here is beginning to glow. Yeah. Don't touch it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn the heat to virtually maximum, and I'm just going to leave it here to warm up. Okay. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder some jump rings. Now, there's a lot of jewellery out there at the minute that's very long and dangly. There's lots of components that are put together, and it will catch in your clothes. You know, if you're putting jump rings together, if you don't solder it, there's a risk of it falling apart. And as you become more into your jewellery making, you want to make things that last. Yeah, especially if you want to have it as a little sideline or you want to do craft Yeah, if you're selling it, you don't want customers coming back going, it broke the first time I wore it. So I've put together some bits. And the easiest way to do it is if you assemble your components, first of all, with the jump rings in place, and then you start to put them together one by one. So if we open the jump ring on here, in the way that you would normally open jump rings by twisting. Don't pull it open, twist it so that it keeps the curve and we'll just loop on this set of crystals. Okay? <coughs> Hold your finding with the join here in a pair of pliers and what you'll need to do is you need to open your flux. This is liquid flux which is for jewellery making but you can buy it in powder form and mix it up as you need it. Flux is very important because what it does is it move, removes any impurities from the metal, it takes any oxide off the metal and it makes sure that the solder's got a very good clean join. You didn't use a lot there. So oh no, no, bit. you just need a little bit just to clean the surface of it. And the solder that I have here has got 4% silver in it, so it's a nice bright solder. It's lead free. Um, and you, to check that your solder's okay, just put the versa tip up against it. You see it's starting to, you know, it's, that's hot. <laughs> I'm going to turn that down a little bit. You only need a small dob of solder on the tip to okay. do this jump ring. If you've got too much, I'm just going to put that, I won't put that down. You get a little sponge with some water. This comes with the kit as well. And you simply just wipe off the excess solder on the wet sponge. Okay? Okay. So we need a tiny dab of solder. And then you literally just dab it onto your jump ring to cover the gap. It's as easy as that? It's as easy as that. 
It's very quick. It cools virtually instantly. So you don't have to leave it to set or? No, I mean, it, it will be cool now. It's very impressive. And I'll just show you that again. Let's take this bit onto it as well. So the good thing is, if you're making a necklace that has lots of links or is quite heavy and you've got a lot of jump rings, it won't add a no. massive amount of time to your, your What I would time. recommend is don't link it all together and then do it, because A, you'll forget which, what you've sold and what well. you haven't. And the other thing is the added weight could, you know, if you've got shaky hands, it could make it difficult to hold it steady in one place. You know, I mean, these pliers actually are quite small. You would be better with larger pliers. But as I say, the join is there, so you need a tiny bit of solder on the end and literally just place Take it on the join. Do you know what? I didn't flux that. <laughs> if you don't flux it, the other thing that flux does is it actually makes solder flow more easily. But if you've forgotten, you can always flux over the top of it. Oh, really? Yeah. If you're doing large soldering projects, actually, I'm just going to do this now. Let's just heat it again. They are perfect join. That is perfect. Very, very quick. You make it look so easy. But if you're doing large soldering projects, <coughs> flux a little bit at a time because it will ev it evaporates it doesn't make it wet but you're easier doing it a little bit at a time so you remember which bits you've done and which bits you haven't um, and it, if you're trying to cover a large area like you're doing a stained glass um, effect with mosaic tiles and things mm -hmm. like this if you find that it's getting lumpy and you're not getting a nice clean you need to paint with the tip of it and if you're not getting a nice clean line if you add some more flux it will make the solder flow much more easily and give you a much better line so I'm just going to put the finding on here, the ear wire on here. Close your jump ring up. This time, remember to add the flux. <laughs> and again, take a tiny bit of solder on the edge. What's on there? You need such you know a what? tiny amount, don't you? Yeah, I mean, as I say, if you've got too much, then it will just wipe off quite simply on the wet, wet sponge. I nearly said wet towel. Just a little bit. You should work in a well-ventilated area because you will get fumes off the flux. Okay. Um, now, as I say, this is lead-free. I can't imagine the fumes are too bad, but I don't know. But always work somewhere. You know, don't work in an enclosed space with no ventilation. Because the other thing is, you know, even if they're not dangerous fumes, they're not very nice to, mm -hmm. to breathe in. So there you have a lovely pair of earrings. Nice and secured. Yes, nice and secured. Just one safety note. I've turned the... Dremel Versatip off now, um, make sure you do. I wasn't turning it off in between soldering the links because you need to keep it hot to melt the solder, but that will stay hot for quite a while. Put it down, put it out of reach of animals, small children, and once it is cooled a little bit for added safety, put the safety cover back on it. Okay. Okay, and then you can pack it away actually once it's got the safety cover back on. Great. But don't forget to turn it off. Okay, thanks very much, Corinne. That's okay. That's what we've got time for here today. But for your local Dremel stockers, go to www.dremel.com. See you next time.